today we are finally getting started on a long awaited project that we are so excited to tell you about. Brendan, fill us in. So we've got six of these 250 watt solar panels to unbox and install on our RV roof for a total of 1500 watts. So we're gonna take you through the full unboxing process, show you our method to install them, and then take you guys along to actually put them up on our roof. So as you can see, we got a Mega 250 Pro Onyx panel from Rich Solar. So it's a 250 watt panel. The Pro means that it actually runs at a higher voltage than their standard panel. And then the Onyx just means that it's a black edition. Because they also carried it in a silver? Yeah. So the reason that we got this panel specifically, I did research for quite a while figuring out what we wanted for our RV roof. Rich Solar, I will say, tends to have a really good size option for panels that fit really nicely with RVs because a lot of RVs are the same width. A lot of people have ACs in the middle. So we were looking for an option of a panel that was gonna fill up the maximum amount of space on the side of our ACs. Of our AC, singular. Of our AC, singular. Which speaking of, if you haven't seen the video on our AC install, we have a pretty darn efficient one. So we'll put a card here for you guys, check that out. So part of our plan for this big install, have a big system up on the roof that can run the AC when we have full sun. So that's gonna be a huge game changer when we're boondocking or just go to a parking lot and wanna run our AC somewhere while we work. So we had really like two big reasons I would say we chose this panel. One was for the dimensions of it. So our plan is to do two rails of panels alongside the two edges of our RV. And part of the reason for that is that we want to try to fasten as much as we can into the framing of our RV. So we definitely know that the sides of our RV has framing. And like I mentioned, these are gonna fit between you know the edge of the RV and the AC. The other reason that we went with this panel is because all of this is gonna be going into an EcoFlow Delta Pro. That is our battery we use to run our entire RV. It's like our full-time generator that we use to run things off of. And that has specific voltage and amp limits that you can put into it. And so this panel specifically was able to really optimize that without going over the top. If you don't know, you definitely can't exceed the voltage of a charge controller that you have. So we are gonna be pushing our power station to the limit, which is really nice, because we'll make use of the capabilities that we have. And it can take 1600 watts max, but we have 1500, so we'll have to make do. Also, if you've been keeping up with our channel, previously we had a thousand watts of flexible solar installed on our roof, which we actually just dropped a video comparing flexible versus rigid. Since we're going with rigid, it might give you a hint of what won that challenge, but- There's still a lot of good tips in there. There's so many good tips. So if you are absolutely new to solar and you don't know where to start, I definitely would recommend just familiarizing yourself and how we got to this point here, because we're definitely not experts. And definitely let me give so many kudos to Brendan in picking the perfect panel for our setup. This guy has been like a madman, I, just playing around on Figma, mocking up potential like solar panel patterns for our roof. Meanwhile, I've just been waiting for the right thing to come in the mail. So thank I've, you yeah, for I've, all your research. <laughs> so between between mocking things up, yeah, getting drone shots of the roof, trying to get a good mock up to scale of how we're gonna fit panels. I also have a big spreadsheet of, you know, listing out all the voltages and amps and looking how other people test the panels to get the most efficiency. This is one of the highest watts per square foot panel that I could find. There are a few ones that are higher, but they come in that like four to 500 watt capacity. So this was a really good sweet spot. It wasn't too intimidating, wasn't too big. We have five more of these to open. Uh, so we should go ahead and do that. If you're interested in this panel or anything else that Rich Solar has, we do have a coupon code. Uh, what is it? <laughs> our coupon code is Gab and Bren 10. We will most definitely have our affiliate link down in the description below. We'll also throw up a QR code here so you can scan it, go right to their site. And guys, any purchases from that, we do get a kickback from. So it does help us support this channel. So we definitely want to make sure you guys are going with whatever purchase makes the most sense for you. But if you're buying from Rich Solar already, we'd love it if you use that link. Thank they, you so much. They do have some pretty good options. We got all of the panels 
out of the box, but before we start throwing up things on the roof, we wanna make sure that all these panels are gonna be in working function. So walk us through what we should be doing. So in order to check to see that a panel's working at all, is to come on the back. Well, what you wanna look for is the open circuit voltage or the VOC. So for this panel, it is 44.7, which means in optimal conditions, if you connect it to a multimeter and check the positive negative probes, that's what it should be reading in ideal conditions. You're gonna check it in full sun facing the right direction and ideally get that open circuit voltage. So we're gonna go through and check all of our panels to make sure that they're producing before moving on with the next steps. The reason I was pointing out you wanna do this in the sun, but you wanna do it fairly quickly because as this panel starts to heat up, the voltage is gonna drop. So when we initially plugged it in, it was getting what, like 44.8? And you could see it's just consistently dropping every right. second or so. 26, 25, so 24, that's crazy. It's probably gonna do that for about 20 minutes or so. So if you leave it out in the sun, you let it get really hot, and then you check the voltage, it might be a little lower than expecting. So this is the ideal way to perform the test. So now that we checked that all the panels are producing sufficient voltage, I would say, now we wanna show you the install process. The first step of doing this is really to install Z brackets. So some people just screw right into the panel and then they have this Z bracket here and then they mount that right to the roof. The Z brackets raise it slightly off of the ground and you just screw right into your roof structure just like that. This is actually what we were going to go with initially. We honestly got a couple days away from the actual install and we were like, you know, just thinking about installing this. And we came to the conclusion that we really wanted it to be serviceable. In case something goes wrong, we do want to be able to remove it easily and replace. These panels all come with a 25 year warranty, but the warranty is really only good if you can get it off and, you know, put a new one on. So we wanted to make sure that we were doing it in a way that we could do that. So that is when we decided to order this Unistrut. Um, so this is an aluminum Unistrut. You can buy this in like galvanized steel from Home Depot and Lowe's, but aluminum from all that I found, especially in Key West where there's limited supply of things, we definitely had to order this online. But the reason that we went with aluminum is one for rust resistance as we do park our RV on the water for a good amount of the year. We live near the ocean, so there's a lot of salt in the air. Things rust really quickly. So aluminum is not gonna rust and aluminum is at least half the weight of steel. It depends on the grade or the gauge of metal that you get, but a significant weight savings when putting it all up on your roof. So this was the next thing that we ordered. This is called a squeeze nut. They make several different types of these. The squeeze nut is what we saw to be the easiest. It comes like this. We ordered a pack of 60 of them. You put it in the rail and then all you have to do is twist it. And then there's just a little mounting hole in there to allow you to screw something to. That means that we're installing the strut permanently to the roof, so we're not gonna be removing the strut. But if we have to take the panels off, we can remove the panels from the strut. So this is what it's gonna look like with the squeeze nuts installed with the Z bracket on top. So you can see I didn't tighten these down all the way, so these actually can slide up and down in the rail. So you can position them exactly where you want to and then we'll be fixing our solar panel to this bracket. So this is the panel with the Z brackets connected and the strut connected to that. And one thing that I didn't mention with using this strut is it's really gonna help distribute a lot of the weight and it's gonna make us feel a lot better putting an extra 150 or 200 pounds up on our roof. And there's a few more steps to take once we get up on the roof and position them where we want the first one is going to be putting this butyl tape on so we'll get good surface area contact across the entire thing and then <laughs> we're going to use these quarter 20 stainless screws to fasten them all down and then after we do the screws gabby <laughs> so we're going to top them all off with lap sealant so anywhere where they were drilling into the roof the butyl tape is going to help with water potentially getting inside but covering it with lap sealant. Anywhere where we're screwing in, we're gonna completely cover the heads of the screws because we won't need to access them again. And this will give a nice waterproof finish. So that is roughly the process as we go from start to finish. We've gotta do this for every single panel, get them up to the roof and then, yeah, take it from there. Okay, we now have five of the six panels prepped. 
They all have these side rails on, so we put all the rails on already. We just gotta put the butyl tape and then bring them up there. The last one, we're actually gonna go with a north and south rail, and it's because there's only one panel that basically doesn't fit long ways along the RV. We gotta turn it sideways. So we're gonna go cut that piece of aluminum, prep the last panel, and then we should be almost ready to bring this stuff up on the roof. Okay, so starting, wow. <laughs> it's so hot. Starting part two of the day. We just took a little break for lunch, so hopefully get it to cool off a little bit. We've got all of our panels prepped with butyl tape. Gabby did a beautiful job on the butyl tape. Thank you. We've got to figure out how to get them up on the roof. Then we can orient them and get them ready to install. Okay, so up on the roof, we went ahead and made all of the connections to make sure everything up here makes sense. We've been in the sun all day. We wanted to make sure we weren't making any mistakes. So in the process of connecting everything, we needed two essentially jumper cables, so extensions that we needed to make on our own. We have this kit on hand that we use to make all these connections. So Brendan went ahead and did that. We have two strands, these two and that top one, and then these uh, three here are our two strands. And then these are essentially the red here are those jumper cables that we made. Once we have everything hooked up, we went ahead and plugged in our EcoFlow because it's dead. So it needs a charge and we want to make sure all of this was outputting properly. It looks so nice and finished right now, which it's so not. We have to secure everything down. So from here, it is time to start peeling off the butyl tape. We'll stick it down um, and we're going to start from the back, work our way forward. And when we do this process, we're going to be making sure that the panels and the seams essentially, an important thing to note here, so these need to have a tiny gap because road vibrations, you don't want your panels clanging up against each other, um, causing damage over time. That's one thing too. AC is right here and it, it produces water. So it's gonna need a way to get off the roof. So keeping some gappage between the unistruts is gonna allow that water to freely flow. So uh, those are kind of two important things to, to keep in mind there, but I am so excited to freaking get these things bolted down. Being on this roof is absolute PTSD from our roof rebuild. So I'm just like, let's, uh, let's get this thing done in one day and not turn into a three week project. So we'll, uh, we'll get those materials up here on the roof. Okay, so we tested one screw and it grabbed so, so well, which we're stoked about. I know that we reviewed some of this hardware earlier on, but we have stainless uh, lag screws that we're using here. These things look super nice and big fan of using stainless stuff where we can. So we're screwing these in, but before we do, we're making a pilot hole and we got a fat washer to help distribute that. And what's super nice is since we did this roof rebuild, we pretty much uh, made notes of where any of the metal supports going across are. So kind of like in this one here, where I position this unistrut, it's definitely more left favored because there is metal framing coming across here that we should be able to hit directly by going right in that hole. Honestly, it's going pretty smooth so far just a lot, of, uh, a lot of sun exposure. But as we're doing this, it is long weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and what a beautiful view of Leo's campground. I know I've shouted out in previous videos, but we are pretty much snowbirding here. And it's crazy to still call it snowbirding. It's almost summer, which means we gotta get out of here. But this is an awesome campground if you guys are ever thinking about coming to Key West. Leo's campground, it is the closest campground to Key West and 
family owned by no other than my parents. So everything about Trip Down to the Keys, feel free to check it out. So Brendan is finishing up on the last screws, which is so nice. Honestly, the screws weren't bad at all to do. Um, they grab shockingly well. I mean, we knew they were gonna grab on the rails on the inside when there wasn't metal. It, we still got grabbed, not as strong, but I mean, we still tried lifting up to be like, can't we rip these things off? And absolutely not. So I got self-leveling lap seal in here. So I'm gonna go through and on top of all of the screws that we put in. So for example, like here you can see, here you can see. So anywhere that we put screws, pretty much what Brendan's doing there, uh, we're just gonna cover and be very generous with lap sealant on top. So we got that butyl tape that's gonna be keeping water out as well as this lap sealant for a ton of waterproofing. So lap sealant is pretty much wrapped up. I did everywhere that I can reach. So Brandon is now coming in for some additional support to get everything on the outside that I couldn't. Um, showed you guys probably some B-roll of it, but just so you can see, pretty much everything is covered up from the screws. You don't see the washer, you don't see the head. And so now I think this is really the last, last thing to do is clearly I have a motorized ratchet in my hand. So all of our panels, they actually still can move on the unistruts because we never tighten them to the unistruts. But I mean, the screws are pretty much already done. So everything on the squeeze nuts here need to be tightened. So take this and that's pretty tight. And we'll probably follow back up with a manual, check the torque on these guys, but one by one. We just get her done. High five. Woo. We did it. It is all done. Complete install is finished. Anything you'd like to add? You know, somehow we always seem to wrap up solar projects right as the sun's going down. So we got a little taste of the output, but we'll have to wait till tomorrow to see how they actually perform. Ah, oh, I am so, so happy to wrap up this job in a day. And guys, we are not done with solar content because, I mean, you guys might be eager to, but we are most definitely eager to see everything that this new solar array can power within our rig. So that is gonna be an upcoming video for you guys of showing everything that we can run and how long our AC going through our daily life and how quickly it's gonna be charging up our battery, our EcoFlow Delta Pro. So guys, thank you for you guys who made it this far in the video. And if you want a sweet system that looks just like this, feel free to check out Rich Solar site. We have that coupon code for you guys, Gab and Brand 10 and we'll have that affiliate link in the description below. Appreciate the time. Brendan, I think you're down there. All right, we'll catch you guys next week. There's my mom, inspecting the work. And before we close out the video, mom coming to check the work. What do you think? Oh, it looks